Welcome everybody to my breakdown of the 2012 Stanley Cup Finals between the LA Kings and the New Jersey Devils. My name is Shane O'Jack. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give you a quick breakdown before I give my breakdown of the Stanley Cup Finals of why I'm doing sport commentaries now. This is my very first one. Uh, you know, I've gone out onto YouTube to try to find people who do strictly sports commentaries like you'd hear on uh, the radio or TV and doing them over gameplay of stuff that's going on in real life and I haven't really seen that and I figure because I work at a sports talk radio station myself I I really need to get that practice so I'm going to start doing these on a semi-regular basis on this channel only and uh, so yes it's the 2012 Stanley Cup Finals I recorded this gameplay a few days ago and I uh, have it ready for you so let's talk about this right now uh, the number six seed out of the east the New Jersey Devils versus the very surprising, some people may say, L.A. Kings out of the West who are uh, on a roll as the eight seed. So uh, New Jersey Devils have home ice advantage in this uh, in this playoff series. So let's talk about first off about how both teams got there. We'll start first. In the West, where the LA Kings, uh, a very interesting stat, they went eight and zero in the playoffs. That's definitely something that teams need to learn how to do early on in the Stanley Cup playoffs to advance very far and get great goaltending. Uh, their goaltender Jonathan Quick is a Vesna finalist. The the award show will be happening in Vegas a little bit later on this uh, in June. But uh, yeah, so they uh, steamrolled the President's Trophy winner, the number one seed overall in the playoffs, Vancouver, four to one. I am personally a Vancouver fan. I'd say. Uh, the fact that Daniel Sedin was uh, missing that series probably played a huge role. But the LA Kings steamrolled the Canucks in five games, and they moved on to the second round to face the number two seed, the St. Louis Blues, and uh, just destroyed them 4-0. And finally, in the Western Conference Finals, the, 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 uh, sorry, they defeated Phoenix 4-1, uh, getting themselves off to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, one thing you should know is that the LA Kings were actually a projected dark horse Stanley Cup contender tender at the beginning of the year and uh uh you know, they sort of underachieved during the season, but they definitely got it under uh, wraps and did what they need to do to get in the playoffs as an eight seed, and they got there playing very well on the road. Uh, let's break down one of the trades that definitely helped them get there. Uh, Last season, Jeff Carter and Mike Richards, both who played for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Sorry, I lose my train of thought there for a second. They were both let go. Uh, Mike Richards was, I believe, traded to L.A., like you see here, and uh, Jeff Carter was traded to Columbus. Now, midseason, Columbus decided to bail ship, and they shipped off Jeff Carter to... LA for Jack Johnson and I believe a first round draft pick either this year or the next year. So Jeff Carter and Mike Richards have played together quite a bit over the years in Philadelphia as well as they played together on Team Canada on numerous times at the World Juniors in 2005. So uh, that's one of the key acquisitions for them during their Stanley Cup run. Now let's go over to the East, uh, New Jersey. 6-1 uh, at home during the playoffs. That's a very, very good record. I can't remember who that only blemish was, but uh, going into uh, the three rounds, they defe defeated Florida 4-3. Florida was the three seed, but in turn, uh, the Devils were actually had more points during the regular season. They defeated Philadelphia 4-1 in the second round. Philadelphia uh, pretty much manhandled uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, who were heavily favorite cup contenders 4-2. And finally, in the... Uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals, they knocked off the number one seed in the East, the New York Rangers, 4-2. Uh, talking about some of their uh, – last year they missed the playoffs. I don't think anyone really expected them getting this far uh, in the playoffs, maybe to win a round or two when they got that matchup against Florida. But uh, they're, nevertheless, they are very well deserving. A couple key acquisitions, they picked up Merrick Zidlicki, who is a puck movie defenseman, and he's able to play on that uh, top defensive line with uh, Bryce Salvador. And uh, the other one is Alexei Ponokarski. I'm pronouncing that probably butchering a little bit, but he's a forward to add to the third line, just giving some depth. And uh, so that is that. Let's see how they match up, in my opinion. Uh, I, have a, I have it here. They're very even across the board. I believe that both teams are very similar uh, ga uh, Sorry, play style, uh, solid goaltending. They're built great up front, and they're very even keel on the back end. But I give a slight edge to L.A. in defense and goaling, goaltending, and here's why. Uh, Jonathan Quick, he's a quickly rising upcoming star for the L.A. Kings. He's a Vesna finalist, as I mentioned earlier. And I give it to L.A. for goaltending because Martin Brodeur, 
you know, he's getting up in there, getting up there in age. And if he were to win the Stanley Cup this year, he might, you know, let it go. He might just call it a day and say that's it. He is 40 years old, and players' skills in the NHL start to deteriorate. 33, 34 years old, and uh, this pretty much is his last kick of the can. Now in defense, I give that edge to LA as well. I think they're pretty evenly matched up in the terms of uh, skill and ability. But the reason why I give them, I give the edge to LA in defense is because of Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty is the only really game-breaking defenseman in this uh, in this series. I don't see anyone from New Jersey uh, able to match his ability or his talent if uh, Drew Doughty decides to actually, you know, break open a game. And uh, up, up front, I pretty much had a, a complete tie. Both these teams run f- four lines. Uh, New Jersey's fourth line is probably the only edge that I give in any re- in any regard because they've been put it, they've really been contributing when need be goal-wise for New Jersey when they need it when the top two lines aren't actually uh, putting through. Now let's talk about some key players for both teams. For LA, first off, Jonathan Quick and Drew Daddy, both names I mentioned earlier. For obvious reasons, uh, Jonathan Quick, because he's a Vesna, he's a Vesna finalist, he's... Martin Berdur, at this point in his career, isn't a... Isn't a uh, can't steal games, but Jonathan Quick can. Uh, Martin Berdur just has to be steady, and that's it. For Drew Doughty, like I mentioned already before, bef- uh, just being the game breaker, that's why he needs to be a key player for the uh, Los Angeles Kings. And for the New Jersey Devils, I think Martin Berdur has to be there. He has to be steady. He can't let up any bad goals. He has been prone to give up some bad ones in the past few years. But if he's steady, he's able to rely on that experience that he has. His three previous Stanley Cup rings, uh, New Jersey very well could win this. And the other player is the $100 million man for the New Jersey Devils, Ilya Kovalchuk. So far, he has the most points in the playoffs uh he has to continue to do that and uh he has to continue to do that for the new jersey devils have a very very strong chance at hoisting lord stanley's mug in a couple of weeks uh after this series is done now let's go to my predictions we're just wrapping up the last 40 seconds here i believe the kings will win this series in six games uh they have been great on the road that is one thing that you need to do in the stanley cup playoffs to win is win on the road and win it consistently they are eight and oh and uh and then there's Jonathan Quick. It's simply, again, his ability to steal games for them. So I see the Kings winning this game in six games. I sort of cheated a little bit, as I mentioned off the top. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm I doing this in between the first and second periods of game one. It's one nothing LA right now. Uh, thus, my predictions. Leave some comments down below if you do feel throw. I'll be having some more stuff coming out soon. Uh, have a good one, and uh, expect a breakdown of game one and a preview for game two coming up soon.